I'm going to go ahead and start. It's just about 2.30. So, you guys enjoying this? Syed's talk was like freaking awesome. Like seriously, it was. Like I hope that those of you that sat in on his talk have a newsletter by tomorrow. <laughs> seriously. So, um, so I'm talking about how to make the most out of Yoast SEO. My name is Niall Flores. I'm from the St. Louis Metro East area. So uh, that just means the arch is my neighbor. <laughs> so um, what I do is I design and develop websites that convert, which means that I deliver pro uh, projects and websites that get the person uh, to have visitors that buy, subscribe, share, comment, get them to do what they want to do because that is the purpose of the website. Even if you're a blogger in here, you're not doing AdSense and you just want attention, you're wanting a conversion to happen. So uh, today I'm not going to talk about website conversion because I, even though I love to, I'm talking about Yes SEO because I do work for them. I'm uh, on uh, their support team and so if you are a premium member, sometimes you may see me and maybe you might or might be a free, per, a free version person, you might hate me because I'm, I work flowed you or something, but um, we, we're here to, to try to help you and everything, so um, hopefully this will help some of that frustration with the plugin and everything that some of you have. So uh, you can find me at blondish.net, and uh, if you do any tweeting, please use my Twitter handle, blondish.net. So my objective today, they're pretty simple ones. Uh, go over some basic SEO tips and go f uh, over a few must-dos and basic best practices for Yoast SEO. Some of them you may have heard, some of you may not. Um, I just kind of like put my little spin on it because I've been using Yoast SEO for probably like, what, four years now? So. For the, before going into the plugin, it's better to go and understand basic SEO first. And in order to understand basic SEO, you have to understand Google first. And a lot of people think it's a game, and Google hates them. Uh, <laughs> why is this happening to me? I can never get my site listed right. Well, it's not Google's fault. Google's mission is actually very clear. Uh, it's uh, to organize uh, the world's information and make it universally, universally accessible and useful. And uh, what they want to do is make it very human. So it's not like they're trying to, uh, you do the search and it's like some weird term and you're like, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever and nothing's coming up. It used to be that way a long time ago, but they've been more refined to, like, for example, Painter, Dallas, Texas. And you have all these search results up with even uh, people who have local established businesses and their pins and a map and all these things that used to not exist. And they're trying to make it very easy for you to get to these things. And on top of that, you can see these things on mobile. Call them from your mobile phone by clicking on the number. Uh, clicking on the map to get to Google Maps. So it's like really awesome. So linking is important. If you want Google to find you, you need to be linking. They follow the links, kind of like a dog. So some of the basic things that they follow you through is your navigation menu, your breadcrumbs, internal links from one page or post to another, or external links from other websites, like if you were featured in an interview, or a roundup, uh, which is like a list of links, like people thought your article was really good, like for example, on my website, I have two uh, roundups called uh, Monday Mashup, which is like blogging, social media, uh, web design, SEO, and so I pick like the most recent topics that I think are like, like solid ones that people should be reading. Um, and then I have WordPress Wednesday, all WordPress stuff, community news, themes, plugins, and it's just a little, you know, a, a hodgepodge of awesomeness. So, and, and basically I'm linking to them. So 
if those people didn't really submit their, their site to like Google Search Console, I've given away for, since my sites are already, you know, on Google Search Console, it's been up for many, many years, 10 years now, um, they'll get to that website. So how does Google determine what, what to list and where? Search, uh, search results are de 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 <laughs> determined by what fits your search terms best. Links to well-written content, links from other websites, also known as off-page factors, and content that is shared well, because that we are not in just uh, uh, focusing on regular search and content, we are also looking for social search, what you're sharing on Facebook and Twitter, Google+, and any other social network you even stumble upon. So, it may rank better than other websites. So, a few basic SEO tips. I'm going to warn you, I have, I have, these are just lists and everything else. Anything, uh, if I have links and everything, don't worry, I will post <laughs> them later so you don't have to take any notes. And I'll make sure to tweet, you have many of you seen me on Twitter, it's going to happen. So, you'll see all the links, you won't miss a thing, I promise. So, uh, write natural and let your blog voice shine. Um, do not go in there and put your keyword in there and say, I got to put my keyword in here this many times because you're going to force yourself to focus on that and you do not sound natural at all. I've had some people like, oh, well, it's telling me, oh, am I not getting a green light for this and Yo SEO and I gotta have more of this keyword in here. And you can't do that. You just can't force it because the thing is, is yes, Google picks it up, but your visitors are the one ha ones that have to suffer through finding out why in the world this does not make any sense any longer. So use keyword research to cover topics that bring your niche uh, needs in order to target and bring in readers, subscribers, buyers. Um, title, 50 to 60 characters, very simple. Um, put your keywords toward the beginning of the post. Um, uh, some of you who've used Yoast SEO probably have gotten the um, not using the keyword in the first paragraph, and it's probably because you either have a short code or an image or something like that there. Um, don't worry about that, you can avoid, ignore that. It's just how that happens. It's trying to say that your image is your first paragraph. That's not worries. That's just the page an analysis tool. Um, write an engaging title. Uh, so the something like the definitive guide of WordPress SEO. It's like, oh my gosh, this is really complete guide and everything. I should go there because it says everything about it. That's what definitive gives me in mind. I don't the guide to WordPress SEO. I want to make it a little more descriptive. So actually that also goes into my re cool resource links. Uh, one of my friends, uh, she was the keynote speaker at uh, WordCamp Seattle, the beginner one, and her name was Kimberly Morris Gauthier. She uh, actually introduced this uh, little cool little tool that you can uh, generate blog titles and for any niche basically you put the keyword in and you can come up with all sorts of wonderful and uh, colorful titles um, for research and everything I really like the, the, the other three tools like Google AdWords Keyword Planner Yoast Suggest and Google Trends that's pretty much aligned with what Yoast actually says on what their tools that they recommend Google Trends is really good so that you can keep on hot, on hot topics. Like for example, if any of you are doing like fashion or news or anything that has current news, that would be a really good place to go to. More basic SEO tips. Have an about page and a contact page. Um, I would actually go further than this. The reason why you should have these things is one, the about page 
Uh, it should be telling you what your mission is and generally telling people who you are, what you're offering, and, uh, and then your contact page is a way for them to get in touch with you, not just slot your email address for every bot in the world to get. Just get that there. And plus, Syed's talk, that, that little uh, box, checkmark box to subscribe to your list, man, pimp that out. Get some subscri subscriptions and your leads in. Um, video, audio, and podcast. Image, infographics should be accompan accompanied by some text, at least 300 words. Uh, you just don't put it up there as a blog post. I know there's uh, people who use like wordless Wednesdays or something like that and just put a picture up. Put a description with it. And not, I'm not talking about you made a description for uh, when you describe and suggest to Google what you would like it to be. Put it in your post. And you can actually utilize that if, for example, if that image may be like, a mark, like marketing, like an infographic, you can use it to guide them where you want them to go, whether it's another article that's related. If you like this, you may want to read more about it here or something like that. So link to external resources to en enhance your own content. Again, we're linking is really important. There's a, been a, I've noticed over the years, a big decline about people wanting to hoard all their own links within their own website, and they're not linking to other people. Google follows links. The thing is, is links can also make, make you some really powerful friends if you link to the right people. And so it also builds your authority. So yes, you have your, all your content, but if you're linking to other people, now you don't sound crazy. <laughs> so make sure your site is mobile responsive. I'm sure you heard mobile getting and everything. And there is a, a tool, and you can find it through Google Search Console. To, and make sure that your site is mobile responsive. A lot of you are not just surfing. <laughs> From here, I'm seeing we have different size of laptops. Uh, she's got several different devices right there. I mean, uh, there's several different sizes, and everybody is surfing, whether they're buying something or reading your website, whatever it might be. Make your website responsive so that whatever they prefer, they'll see it. It's also part of accessibility. Site speed is important. Under four seconds page load time is ideal. Under one now? Goodness gracious, that was three months. Three months ago, they were saying four on the page. Okay, hurry up and do one second. I challenge you to do it today. <laughs> but I would actually say four seconds is actually really gener a really good time to go and get your site under. If you can get it to two seconds or one second, great. Um, especially the front page. Start with that first. <laughs> Last slide on basic uh, SEO tips, promise. I'm so sorry, I have a big list maker. <laughs> have a balanced site structure like a pyramid. I'm pretty sure all you guys visually know what a pyramid looks like. It looks very balanced. You have, you have the top and then it goes out from there. So you have your home page and then about page, contact, maybe your services or something like that. And if your web designer portfolio however it may be. And then from there, you spread to like your other content, like your you know, blog, or, and then you interlink those. Have a clear navigation. Uh, don't put everything in your menu. I've had people like uh, even, what is it, on the 2012 theme, they had all these like three lines in, of just navigation links in their main menu. That's ridiculous, you don't need that. It's so to simplify it. Don't 301 direct all your 404 not found pages to the home page. You're lo you losing traffic. 
people just get confused and go away. Well, I thought I was going here, I guess I'm not. And then they try it again if they're feeling brave enough to do it, otherwise they just go and never come back ever again. So, for example, if your page in Google Search Console uh, that comes up in their error, crawl errors, um, say it says, uh, say you no longer have a page on a topic on uh, strictly, maybe you renamed a blog post, okay? And you forgot to redirect it to the new blog post. Then don't redirect that to home page. Redirect that to the page that actually exists. And if there's no other that exists there, then finally, yeah, yeah you can do do that, or you can uh, make a special page, customize your 404 page to make sure. Like for example, I like to do like a you know a form. You said you know. I see that you were searching for this, and I'll get that in my form, uh, that that's what you were searching for, and then give you the opportunity to give me feedback. And all of a sudden, that gives me fuel to replace content that you were actually looking for, whether it's uh, for my website, or maybe I am say, well, I no longer do this kind of stuff, but I know somebody who does who's a really good friend. Like, for example, Chris Lemma or something like that would have some awesome article about membership plugins. I'd be like, He's the one to go to. So um, have, a clean, have a clear permalink stru structure. Host name is a really good one. And by the, I'm glad that it took a long time for them to add it as an option in the WordPress admin. And when they added it, I was like, I celebrated because forever I was typing for post name. And can you keep those questions till the end? Sorry? Hmm? Oh. For membership plugins? ChrisLemma.com. Post name. It's an option in your in your permalink settings and your WordPress backend. And if you need to know how to clean your site structure, I am leaving a link up here. So you can go into it further. So now that we got those over, we got to talk about Yoast SEO. Uh, it is a tool to help you optimize your website's content to be seen more favorably by Google. When I answer my support tickets and they ask me that kind of stuff, this is exactly what I tell them every single time. It's like my, my swipe I add in every time. <laughs> So Yoast SEO, um, you can uh, optimize several areas. Uh, it actually has a real-time pay, uh, real page analysis tool. So as you're editing, editing, the, editing your article, they have a page analysis tool that analyzes it as you go. You can edit your titles and, and meta descriptions. These are a way to suggest to Google that this is the title and description that you really want to see, be seen listed in Google. You can uh, edit your robot meta settings, and they actually come with a XML sitemap uh, feature, and they generate it for post sitemap, post page, taxonomies, um, and if you uh, have custom post types and everything, and the, and the plugin doesn't recognize it, you can actually add a filter in to have that uh, yeah, that uh, piece of sitemap added to the Yoast SEO sitemap. It has social in integration, um, especially for Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google+, uh, Pinterest, <laughs> and uh, as Google Search Con the free version does have Google so Search Console integration. That way you can see all your 404 crawl errors or any other crawl errors that come up in Google Search Console. Um, you can edit your robots t uh, txt file and your htaccess file. Um, you can also optimize your RSS feed so that, for example, anybody who tries to uh, uh, fetch your crawl site and, they, and then they post it up, it'll, you can put a link 
in that RSS feed to link back to your site so they know where the original content came from. And then um, they also have canonical links, so you can tell where the original content came from. Like, uh, if it, even if it came out from another website, like uh, uh, maybe you got syndicated from Forbes. Well, Forbes is actually, if they have a tool, a canonical link tool, they'll link back to your article that was the same article there. So Google won't dock you for duplicate content. Uh, I'm gonna, a lot, some of you already have like the most current version of Yoast SEO. This is actually the next version that's coming up very soon. This is the release candidate three, this is the 3.1 release candidate right here. So uh, of course, uh, the URL doesn't look that pretty because I was beta testing. So when I took the screenshot, I was still testing it out. I just need to do screenshots. So uh, rather than the old one, we've kind of cleaned up the snippet editor area. It, we, we still have that, but it seems a lot better. You just click the button and you get the field separate. It's not so confusing anymore. And we listen to you about that. So here you can uh, edit your title, SEO title, your slug for your permalink, and your meta description. And that's just the first part of this. Uh, this goes in your post or page editor. So here you could add your focus keyword and everything. I actually you know, used one of my articles, existing articles, to put in the data. And uh, so my, con my convert Drupal to WordPress one. And so basically, uh, this is all the, <laughs> the, the, the actual analysis of that post. And so, yes, it has a stop word. It's telling me that there's two in there. Well, I, I actually need it because that's actually how it's supposed to be out there on, on Google, convert Drupal to WordPress. Uh, so it tells you uh, I have an image. Or sorry, actually I have, uh, this post has been recently updated and blah, 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 something like that. Um, so it's, of course, the focus keyword's not gonna be in the first paragraph, that's true. So I got a red. So it kind of gamifies how you do it. Some people don't like it, but some people really like it, really do like it. And some people really like it so much that they're, they're that type A personality, like, I need it to be green. I will get into that eventually. <laughs> so now that the features and everything, I'm just giving you some screenshots. Um, if you're using uh, Yoast SEO, we actually have uh, uh, given you a better way to enable and disable uh, sitemap functionality instead of the little checkbox that's kind of hard to click because it's so small. <laughs> and then. Uh, when you enable it, it this, uh, the other screenshot to the right <laughs> just shows you what, what the sitemap looks like. So you can edit your titles and metas from the individual posts, or, but you can also edit them generally. So say you really aren't being picky and you don't really need to edit, like customize a post, you could just fall back on your on your general template that you've come up with. And there's variables and everything. We give you, there is a way in that back end to be able to, there's a drop down like a screen options and it gives you all the variables that you can use like for your title, uh, the page separator, your site name, whatever the way that you want it to be seen, you can suggest it that way. You can also uh, select meta robots for indexing or no indexing. Um, you can also, if you prefer, if you are writing totally evergreen content, which means that whatever you wrote five years ago is still valid, valid information today, you can hide the date in the snippet preview, which if you blog and you come up with the search results, some of you have probably seen this in blogging, that there's a date before the description. This allows you to turn that, you know, take that out there, hide it. And uh, you can also control whether you want, you really want the Yoast SEO meta box to show for that post type or taxonomy or your archives or whatever it might be. So um, one of the cool things I kind of mentioned is social SEO, uh, social profiles and open graph. 
So um, you can, the great thing about this is it allows you to customize how you want your post to be seen on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and everything else. So if you, if you actually fill out all this stuff, and even if you connect it to like a Facebook admin and insights, you can, tra you can even track this kind of stuff. So uh, the other thing is the profiles and everything. Uh, Google has what's called a knowledge, gar knowledge card. If you've ever seen in the search results to the right, uh, on some places, like uh, maybe uh, IMDB or something like that. And so you see all this information, and all of a sudden you see icons to like Facebook and Twitter and everything to their profiles. That's something. Google does not always issue those to people. It's, remember, it's a suggestion. Thank you. So um, the example of, okay, the previous screenshot, if you connect your post, connect your, you know, do open meta, or sorry, open graph, and then um, fill out everything. Uh, for example, I shared this on my professional fan page on, on Google. And so it tells you um, my title, the uh, description, and then it tells you where it came from and who published it. And when it says it's linked to Niall Flores, it's not linked to my professional pan, fan page. It's linked to my personal fan page. So it knows that I'm a real person outside of my fan page. So the next thing is I mentioned about gamification and the green light. That green light might be really tempting, but please do not live your life by it. It may harm you. It's kind of like uh, stuffing putting key, so many keywords in that really don't belong in there. And it's just really awkward and it turns off your regular readers and your new readers. You're like, I'm confused. Um, it's not an absolute must. Write naturally, don't for force content or take away specific content just to get all green lights. Um, I included an article, uh, Yost's wife did a really awesome job writing it up, and it came at a time we really needed this explained. And I'm pretty sure most of the people who have already read the article before really appreciate it, uh, that. It actually is a reassurance that you don't have to have all green lights. It's okay. <laughs> Yoast SEO best, uh, best practices, titles, and descriptions. While Google, Google ultimately makes the decision on what's the best title for your article is, don't give up. Make sure to set your titles and meta templates in your WordPress admin under SEO, titles and meta. Sometimes you will need to edit the individual post or page titles if you need, to, need it to be different from your settings, just like I mentioned earlier. Yoast SEO best practice is XML sitemaps. Enabling the XML sitemap sitemap feature is only half the work. I get a lot of people, uh, I have to ask them, did you submit your site to Google Search Console? Remember, Google's following the links. So if you're really new, that's the fastest way to go for Google following the link if you submit it to them in the first place. Uh, images. Don't forget to label your alt tags in your images. Uh, preferably put your keyword in it if you, at least one of them. Don't use huge images, scale or resize them. Label the image file with the keyboard, like just I said. Um, I linked to a few things on there. Really handy if you wanna learn more about it. Um, on don't block your CSS or JSS files. Unfortunately, people still are having this issue, and that's fine. There's a way to do that. Uh, Google can't crawl your site or render it properly. And basically, if you've submitted to Google Search Console, you could actually see the line that they're having issues with. It'll have a little caution right next to that line. So you need to either change it or take it, take it off. Don't, uh, don't block your WP admin or WP includes because they have scripts in there that help your site be seen properly in the right order. Um, otherwise, it comes out like uh, whenever your style sheet fails. So that's how Google's going to see it. And that's not cool.
write at least 300 words. I know some of you aren't really the biggest writers in the world, or sometimes you're so busy. Um, 300 is the minimum magic number of words you should be writing. This includes for products, images, video, and audio content. Don't just post them alone. Of course, like I said earlier, have a mobile-ready website and make it, or make it responsive. Accessibility do, really does matter. Just because you can surf your own website doesn't mean everyone surfs and processes your website in the same manner. Make sure your website is accessible. I tell you, really small text, like gray. Uh, there are a lot of legally blind people in this world. I, said, I think another accessibility, one out of five of your visitors are, have a, uh, an issue with accessibility whenever they come to somebody's website. Um, that's pretty serious, so you need to think about those people. And I'm not talking about old elderly people, I'm talking about young people. My best friend, she's 35, she's actually legally blind. She can't see gray text. Make your posts easy to read. Well, unless you're like an academic and your target audience is an academic, yes, then fine. Bring out the big, big dogs when it comes to words. So don't use a lot of big, uh, otherwise don't uh, use a lot of big, big and fancy words. Your, re your readers need to understand you. And also uh, break, up your, break up your paragraphs. Vary the length of the uh, paragraph. Walls or text are very daunting, especially for people who are dyslexic. I'm dyslexic. If you have more than nine lines going, I, I, I have to really look at it closely and it's slower and it's harder to read. Hmm? That's fine. Um, that was the last one. <laughs> um, so are there any questions? Just in case if uh, you're shy or you need to ask more, I will be in the happiness bar after this. So <laughs> I guess I could start in the front. Uh, gentleman right here. Okay. Okay, so he was asking about hiding, hiding the date and everything. If, uh, if it totally, like, Google doesn't even know it's hidden and everything. Google knows when you posted it, okay? It's just hidden from the description. So you, you can't hide it from Google. Uh, you hide it from Google, like, you know, data-wise. But you can hide it from being seen in the search results. So start writing content more around that, that event. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, so um, it's on updating content, like for example, an event that was like last year, and then I'll, he's posting new content and everything. If you really want to, uh, Google to get to it right away, submit your sitemap index to Google Search Consult on a major change like that, so they bring it up. They, they'll crawl it, and they'll place that over the other one. It, not all the time. Remember, just because you submitted just because you submitted Google the sitemap once, if you make changes to your website, you should be occasionally, as you change, you should, well, you don't need to set, you don't, when you submit that for an event and you want attention to it, you submit, okay, see me in the happiness bar, we'll talk about it. I'm sorry? The minimum, the max, the best. Google does, uh, she's saying what's the best amount of words uh, for blogging, like a blog. 
honestly it depends on the content. You really have to think about what you're going to write about. Look to see what's out there, see what they're writing. But the minimum yes is 30. However, I like 750, 1500 is a really good number or more. Uh, of, like I said, Google likes long form content the best. So. Okay, We're, I'll have to see you in the happiness bar. <laughs> All right, I guess everybody's going to go down. Um, if you have any questions, you can see me in the happiness bar, okay?